don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I found a really cute image amongst my um, collection on my computer that I thought would make a great art journal page. Um, I've also, well as soon as I saw the image, uh, a lyric from a song also popped into my head as the slogan or the quote for the page. So just absolutely perfect. It's all just kind of slotted together. So I, want, I know the image that I want to use and I know the slogan that I want to use, but how the actual page is going to come together I've got absolutely no idea. So I'm going to go over to my little filming station over there and I'm going to get started. And it's going to be an organic kind of creation process today. It's going to be one of those where I'm not really sure where I'm going with it or how it's going to look at the end. So let's get started. So this is my eight inch um, Dilutions Creative Journal and I'm actually now on the very last page. This is it. So the last page that I did in this one was this art journal page, which I still haven't kind of trimmed off the bottom. It's a bit lax of me, isn't it? Um, but this is the very, very last page then, so there's nothing else in this one. Let's move that pot of paint water out of the way. So this is going to be where I'm going to create the main kind of image, or the main part of the art journal page, and then it'll just spill over onto this side. And it's kind of fairly flat, so that's cool. So. Um, some of the papers that I want to use, I've gone through um, an old paper pad um, that I've got that was sent ages ago in Happy Mail, which I have no cover on it anymore, but it's got all kinds of manner of different papers in there. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure where it came from, there's nothing written on it. The cover's long, 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 long gone. Um, but it's still a rich source of, of backing papers. So what I want to do is I'm going to create some kind of texture in the background. So I've got some um, music paper. I've got some kind of written postcards. There's kind of a ledger paper and there's a, a map as well. So I'm going to rip and tear these into the background. Um, maybe use one to create my own kind of washi tape, maybe use that one to create some washi tape with those kind of lines on there. Um, I've got my focal or focal point or the image already printed out and cut out because um, ain't nobody got time to watch me sit and do fussy cutting. Um, but I'll show you that in a second along with what I've chosen for the quote or what quote popped into my head when I saw the image. So this is just going to be the background to start off with. So we're going to do kind of like a multi kind of stick down kind of background. I'm also going to include a little bit of stenciling into the background. Now I can't decide yet whether to use um, texture paste or whether to use just ink or paint, but the stencil that I'm going to use is this one. And this is a brand new stencil. So this is yet to be released. This one is called Diamond Drops. And obviously you can have it whichever way you want. So that way creates a really nice kind of grill, but that way creates a real nice kind of optical illusion effect. A bit like um, the previous one, the Matrix one, which I released uh, earlier this month. So this one is going to be one of those ones that are in the next release but I kind of like this one. So I think I'm going to use this in the background. So it gives that kind of nice texture um, for maybe paint and spritzes or um, any kind of runny color to kind of gather around. But also if you just use it for stenciling, it's kind of nice textury kind of harlequiny kind of effect. So that's going to be, so that one's called Diamond Drops. So like I said, that one will be coming soon. So, Let's kind of get started then. So what I want to do is I'm just going to remove that title. I don't want the title involved and we don't really want that bit of paper or the writing at the bottom. All we want really is just the music. So we'll tear that as well. Just kind of feather that, just pull that in. That's kind of the background, and then we can just put a little bit of that, make it a bit uneven. There we go. So that will do for that. So that can kind of go there 
for now. What I will also do is maybe just remove the sides of one of those map sheets. So I'm tearing with my right hand that way so I get the feathered edge. If you're left-handed, do it from the other side because you'll get the feathered edge on that side. If I tore the other way, you don't kind of get the same feathered edge, if you know what I mean. You kind of lose it underneath there. It's just wherever your predominant hand is. <laughs> so let's just pull some of that and I'm going to go back and pull that back because I want that white feathered edge on that side. So you have to keep kind of turning around to get it. There we go. So what I'm going to do is we'll use that strip on the other side of the page. Like I said, I've got no real idea of where this is really going. I know what the image is that I want to use, but I'm not kind of sure just yet how it's going to kind of like build up if you get me drift. So maybe a bit over there. And then another kind of strip over here. It's a warmish day today, so we've got the windows open and the doors are rattling, which is a bit irritating. I might have to just put something on there just to stop it from rattling. All right, so up there. Focal image is going to be about this side, so it's going to be range right. What I want to do is create some clusters with the paper. So let's grab some scissors. No, let's just tear it. We're already tearing, so let's just do that. Forget me on advice for tearing now. There we go. Let's rip that one off. Okay, so we've got a piece like that. It's just an exercise in tearing pieces of paper this at the moment, isn't it? Okay, so we've got another one, which I think we'll put over here. I want that torn edge there. I don't want a straight edge, that's better. So we'll have another piece of that like so. And then that piece can go there could do actually with some more music paper, just have a little piece of music paper on this side, just to kind of tie it all in, see if I've got any more. Yes. That'll do. Put another piece there from my stash. So I'll just rip that piece there. And that can kind of just sit like that. It just kind of ties it all together. I might even put it over there. That'll do, I think. That will kind of tie the background together like so. So what I need to do now is I need to glue all this lot down. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not going to glue it down with matte media, I'm just going to use ordinary glue. <clears throat> so, um, just white glue. So I've got this new glue from Indigo Blue. Yeah, Indigo Blue new grab-and-go glue. 
I'm sure they don't mean to do the rhyming. <clears throat> so it's a fast grab and dries clear as well, but it's got a real useful nib on the end. Can you see? So you can control the flow of the paper or the, the glue. So, and it's a fast grab as well. So we'll just, there we go. Now the reason I'm not using like a matte medium is because I want it to maybe fray at the edges and, and curl up once we start adding maybe a little bit of water. So that's going to be perfect for it to do that because it'll curl. We'll have a bit of texture just on there. Okay, so the next piece, if I can remember where I was going to put everything now. So piece there we said, didn't we? With a piece like that. And then where's that other piece gone? <laughs> So rubbish that get rid of that bit there. There we go. So that can go a bit up there like that. Just hide that edge. I think that's what we said, didn't we? I can tell I'm doing this on the hoof. I'm winging it and don't mind admitting. So so winging it today. Right. Don't care if it's upside down. It's only a matte piece. Okay. There's no really right or wrong way around to have that bit of paper there because there's writing in different directions so and there's recipes and shopping lists and all sorts written on there so if you get it upside down it doesn't really matter okay and the other bit What I like about using like a fast grab glue is the fact that you don't have to wait for things to dry before you can just carry on. Alright, so we'll use that piece first there. And then we'll put the piece of music paper there. And then the bit of boom. Let's use a different piece, maybe a bit smaller. Maybe just make it a bit more raggy. I'll do. Yeah, that can sit just there. Okay, so there's the basic kind of structure of the page that we're going to use. So now, I'll just close that little, and I can use the word nipple on there, just to make sure that the glue doesn't clog up. So it does close. You twist it to open and twist it to close. It's great. Okay, so next step, let's add some gesso. 
I've got some Dina Wakely white gesso. So we're going to add ooh, a thin layer of gesso onto the page. So it's going to be, let's grab some kitchen roll or kitchen towel. <clears throat> That's it. So I don't want to do a thick coat of white gesso. I want to do a watered down coat of gesso. So add some water to it and then we can go across. Like I said, if there's a little bit of paper curl, so much the better. Because that's the kind of texture that I'm going for today. Bit more paint, bit more water. I'm getting a bit of a blue cast coming out of that brush. I obviously didn't clean it properly. Let's give it another wash out. Maybe I should have cleaned the water first. <laughs> or used a clean brush. That would have been better, wouldn't it? That's fine. And then we'll take that over to the other edge. And kind of work that in. And then feather it out. So, a bit more water. I think just add a little bit of water to the page if you want, and that will help just to soften. knocks the background into the back into the further into the background or you your under papers further into the background okay so we'll get that dry I'll get that cleaned up and then I'll be right back okay so everything's dried off as you can see the background has kind of disappeared a little bit more into the background but it's not completely disappeared obviously you can still see the individual pieces and the music in there. So we still haven't got any other colour on there just yet. So before we do, I want to introduce this kind of stencil. So structure paste. And we'll take some, just using a plastic spatula, a spatula. I'm just going to put some down onto my mat and then I'm going to just bring that down and then across actually I think and then just smooth that through there lift that up so we've got a nice kind of pattern there and I want to add a little bit up on this side And we'll bring that down over that music paper just to kind of integrate that in a little bit there. There and there. Don't want to add too much there. Maybe just lift a little bit of that off there before it dries. Just grab a wet wipe. that off my fingers, just clean up the excess off the spatula. And then I can just go in with my finger and just kind of feather that out before it dries. And then 
then just soften those edges just by dabbing with that wet wipe and that's before your texture paste dries and obviously you need to clean it off your stencil immediately or drop it into some water if you're going to clean it later otherwise if the texture paste dries on your stencil you're going to ruin it so I'm going to quickly just go and wash that and then I'll be right back okay my stencil is now clean so I often get asked how I clean or what I use to clean my stencils with a texture paste I use an old toothbrush um, or you can buy a toothbrush dedicated use for cleaning all the gunk out from your stencils um, yeah we just use old ones so whenever we, we replace our toothbrushes we keep the old ones for cleanups so there you go so all done so I just need to make sure that this is completely dry before I go any further so I'll do that and then I'll be right back everything should now be nice and dry it's still a tad warm which is fine so I'll need to get my spritz cloth out which is a work of art on its own <laughs> um, so I'm going to add some colour to this side first so I just want to lift it up off the workstation or off the table just because it just needs to even the page out otherwise it's all just going to run down to this side so the colours I'm going to use today are going to be predominantly kind of um, blues and browns. So I've got turquoise. So this is a mix that I've made up myself using um, dry pigment powders, in this case Brushos from Colourcraft, just added to water and then added into these little bottles. So I'm going to just lightly now just start adding in that colour just in short spritz you can see how it starts to run so I'm trying to avoid getting too much it's going to run which is fine but I can pick excess up with a piece of kitchen towel I just want it to kind of sit in those wells there so just hold that for a minute and then I can just bring in my heat gun and just try and evaporate that a little bit um, or maybe I should just let it go just like in the words of the song let it go okay bring it back and then just add a little bit more and then let that run across that's actually quite nice actually it's going to fit in quite nicely with what I want to do so that was a little happy accident let's bring a bit more of that over I'm not adding any additional water to this I'm just letting the water in the product just do its own thing so just let that sit I think and pool out there let's just bring that cloth there we go Gonna let that pool and then just add some heat to it okay so the majority of it on this side of the page is dry there's still some stubborn sides or stubborn parts there that are taking longer to evaporate than the other so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of kitchen towel and I'm just going to absorb the excess water it will disappear when we add the next layer so this time I've got sandstone which is a lightish brown colour so I'm going to add a little bit of that let it splatter, let it mix, which creates a little bit of a greenish tone. So we can add a little bit up there, just a little bit there. And then just let that do its thing. Just like that. OK. 
Okay, before everything is dry, I think what I'm going to do, there's still water pool in there, so I'm going to lift it up and just let it run. If there's enough water to let it off for it to go, it'll go. If not, it'll just create those lines look. So we've got some movement there. That didn't go anywhere. That one didn't go anywhere. Okay, so again, those stubborn areas. Just take a piece of clean cloth or clean, clean kitchen towel and then just lift it off. There we go. And it creates some great kind of background textures, very kind of grungy. Okay, so final then, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre, or a little bit of yellow ochre, not more because I haven't added any at all yet, just in some, just a few kind of areas, but not many. There. I think that will do. Not going to do any more. And again, get it dried. Or let it dry naturally if you want. Okay, so all dry. I just love this kind of darkish grunge towards the bottom, but just a few kind of smatters up the top there. But you've got that lovely kind of turquoisey blue melting into the teals right in there love it absolutely love it now what we could do is we could add some white splatters but if we add any white to this pigment it's going to reactivate the pigment and it's going to turn the white um, into a color so there's no real point in doing that so the best way to do it, because we've added the white gesso underneath everything, is just to add a few splashes of water and then lift the colour off to create your highlights. Rather than adding white gesso or white acrylic paint, that's just going to take up the colour of the background. So what we can do is, if we're real careful, is just add, I'll just do one or two splats at a time, like there. Just see it lifted a little bit of colour up. Oh, there we go. Just there, look. Do another one. Just give it a little, uh, one or two seconds to activate again and then lift. See how it's just making it a bit lighter. And there. So lift, lift, lift. We do one there. Maybe just do quite big blobs. So just creates a little bit of lightness in the background. One more up there. Just let that go for a second or two, just here, and then we'll just lift that off. You could, if you wanted to, um, <clears throat> put some water, <laughs> depending on how controlling you want to be, with a little brush, and you could actually add in some water to wherever you want to lift it. Leave it for a second or two and then lift it, so for example there, 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 lift, 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 
lift. <coughs> I think that bit there is where there wasn't any gesso. So, depends how precise you want to be. You might not want to be precise at all. Or you might want to be very, very controlled. <laughs> That'll do. Just kind of gives it a bit more of a motley background. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to get that dried off. Okay, so now it's time to introduce my focal image for the page. It's going to go here, and here he is. Now I didn't want to cut him out exactly, I wanted to leave that kind of white border around him. But I think that works really, really well for that background. Just like that. Mix him pop. So I'll grab the glue, flip it over. around the edge should do and then flip him over and then we'll stand him about there now I'm just gently smoothing him down onto the page. And then we've got the slogan, which I think is absolutely perfect. Oop, it says drop in it. So we're going to just add that to this section here. Yes, absolutely perfect. Well, I think so too. Oop, a bit too much glue there, I think. Maybe I'll have the nozzle a bit too wide so let's just smooth that with my finger and then drop it down and then do the same thing again not so much glue this time. <laughs> there we go. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for a minute or two just to kind of set and settle and then I'll be right back. 
Okay, so they've had a little bit of time to settle down a little bit. So what I want to do now is I just want to pick out a little bit of colour in the character. So what I've done is I've just taken the lid to my bottle and I've just spritzed a little bit of that colour into the bottom. And I'm going to take a water brush. There's no water in it, so it, just any paintbrush will do. And I've got a little bit of colour. What I want to do is I just want to add it just to his vest or his tank, depending on where you are in the world. Just to kind of blend him in just a little. <laughs> the beauty of this is, providing you don't go too heavy, is that you can go in and add some more colour to him later on if you wanted to. So, I'll just clean the brush. And then I did the same thing with the the brown and then if you want you can just add just a little bit of colour just like a hand tint now I've only just noticed actually I thought he was wearing shorts but it looks like he's wearing a, like a, a towel around his waist there we go just add like a little bit of colour just into that background just just a tint and a hint of colour Now I'm resisting the temptation to do his face. I want to leave that as it is. But I might just add a little bit of blue colour just to the umbrella at the top. Oh, his parasol. So we've got some of the blue. Let's just see whether or not we can pick up a little bit of the colour. No, it's not going to let us add it in. This has been done using my laser printer, so... The lighter colours, like in his vest or his tank top, there's not a lot of toner on there, but there is on the brolly, so the colours actually pool in. Never mind. It's just a tiny, tiny hint. You probably will be able to see it in the photos at the end, but probably not right now. So, let's just clear those colours out of the way. And I'll wash those lids out in a little while. But that just helps, just to bring that into the foreground a little bit. But what I'm going to use, this is a Stabilo All pencil. It's a black one. And I'm just going to use the same brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit of black, not a huge amount, just a tiny tiny amount and I'm just going to go underneath those. Just to kind of create a drop shadow. And you can soften it once it's dry just by adding a little bit more water but it will dry lighter anyway and I'm going to leave that as it is and I think I'm happy now kind of like I said I wasn't really sure where it was going what it was going to look like but 
I'm happy. I'm happy with the way it looks. So time to stop. So all I'm going to do now is just going to sign it. I'll use that there as the line. And I'll date it. And today's date is the 12th. So 12, 6, 21, palindrome. Same the front to the back. And that's it for today. So that is my art journal page for today. If you've enjoyed it, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. But I would like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, videos like this just wouldn't be possible. Thank you. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.